natural building is for you to have a very personal and intimate relationship with your home. It creates a relationship to place to a structure that provides, you know, such a huge necessity of life, which is shelter. There's just no comparison for me, really, being in a house that breathes and has had so much care put into it. So often I just stop and I'm just so grateful to be here, to have the opportunity to be sheltered by a very thoughtful process. It's kind of intuitive to work with materials that are naturally occurring for health reasons and for environmental impacts. It's really a different feeling to use natural materials. The idea of keeping a lifestyle that's in touch with nature in a sustainable way really came about as we, when we met in our early 20s and started traveling and really started looking at the way people live and how that affects the systems that are essentially supporting us, like air and water and food growing in the soil. <laughs> that just really seems to be a, a big foundation for how we then wanted to live our lifestyle and also raise our kids so that they're very much in tune with them. Um, aspects of nature that are of course integral to our actual health and survival. Straw bales and piles of clay don't cost very much compared to, you know, drywall and two by fours at the, at the lumber store. I mean, we have a very moderate or like mild climate, so it doesn't get that hot, but it doesn't get that cold. But adding the extra insulation of the straw bales, having the walls be able to breathe essentially, has worked out very, very well. So it meant heating and cooling would be even easier than in a cob house. And the cob house, as long as it's small, like with my workshop here, it's only 450 square feet. One wood stove, easy to heat. And once, if you keep it up, it keeps the temperature pretty good, but it will cool down. So. When we, when we chose to do that, we decided, let's do straw bale for the house. One of the main benefits to this type of wall system is the, the vapor permeability. So in conventional building, we have wall systems which are based around vapor barriers and completely sealing off your building. So in a conventional building, we depend on active systems like a, a vent in a building like this, a straw bale building, or a cob, or like clay, we have passive wall systems. So a, a passive system is much more efficient than an active system and doesn't depend on electricity, doesn't depend on functioning systems. So you've got all the conveniences of a conventional home, electricity, power, everything you need, but then you've also got this organic structure that you're living in. A wall that breathes, a wall that's round, a wall that's earthy, this is like more beautiful. It's like just a totally different feeling. This is not just another house. This is like a work of art. We wanted a non-toxic, environmentally friendly, um, small footprint home that we could feel good about and that was healthy to live in. It just fits our value system, being resourceful, not wasting things. I mean, even on the site, I think we've only taken maybe nine or 10 bags of garbage off the site. Everything else has been repurposed. A lot of it can be reused. A lot of it is, it's, it's just being creative, I think, more than anything. When sort of the opportunity arose, I just didn't want to build another toxic box, essentially. You know, I wanted to do something different, something that was healthier for the planet and for us. We still have a post and beam house. The straw is just the infill, right? So it's not really that different. It's just a house. It's just another house. It's just straw instead of fiberglass straw pink, mud. you know? The system is set up that makes it really difficult for people to build in this way, and that's the sad part. You know, the regulations and the hoops you have to jump through are very discouraging. And, you know, there have been people on this island that have given up. 
when I heard, you know, Sandy and Don starting, I thought, wow, good for you, you know, to, to be willing to buck the trend, mm -hmm. so to speak, and, and still persevere. That's probably one of the biggest challenges, and that's why, you know, for anybody thinking about doing this, I would say, by all means, you can do it and go for it and do it, but build small to begin with, because it's going to be, you know, more complicated than you're anticipating uh, because of the new seismic codes. Everything is seismically engineered. The plates that attach all the post and beam system, which is the structural part of the building, are like a, an inch thick. Um, for the bottom plates and five-eighths of an inch on the, on the top and each bolt is rated to something like I think 13,000 pounds of, of strength so it, it's, it's ridiculously overbuilt. It's really empowering to feel like something that feels so far out of your reach like building a house is actually it, totally possible. I never knew whether I'd get the opportunity to build a home in my lifetime but it's it's been a really fun, challenging, interesting. It's like any big experience in your life. It's got everything in it. It's not all fun, it's not all easy, but it's a beautiful community creation. Our project got delayed for a number of reasons over the, the past year, and so really we should have been at this stage in the summer, in August, when it was warm. It's later than usual for applying plasters in the year, as it's fairly cold and wet this time of year, but we're doing it so we can close up the building this year. When you build in a place like Pender, a lot of people, a lot of locals that you connect with will say things like, oh, well, who did you get to do that? Are they from the island or are they off island? It's one of the first things they ask often. We've been very cognizant of that and trying really hard to, to hire local people as much as we can. Jacques and Bryce are both really passionate about natural building and they're really dedicated to it and they're really hardworking guys that are really trying to make a difference in the world and, and our daughter too, she's been an integral part of all of this build. Yeah, my parents are doing the contracting so um, on the site every day is actually just Jacques and Bryce and I and often my mom comes out and helps with things as well. A lot of people had recommended that being on site all the time is really important because there are a lot of big decisions and a lot of micro decisions to make throughout the process. And so if you're not a detailed person, you don't like making decisions, maybe this isn't you know, something you'd want to do, general contract a house, probably not. Coming from a bit of a building background, you know, I was realizing, well, I'm really pushing the time frame on what you're supposed to accomplish building a house, you know. But once I started looking at it, okay, I'm not building a house, I'm creating a piece of art here. Once I looked at it from that angle, it helped me. It just made it easier to go with the flow. No matter how well you've planned it, it's very organic. And that's, the, that's one of the beauties of natural building. If you don't get it right the first time, you just take a little off or put a little on. And so you're constantly doing this and, and you're feeling it. Not everything has to be perfect. You know, the natural world, it's, there's so many little imperfections and should be appreciated and should be looked at as beautiful instead of being looked at as faults. The first year, I think for a whole year, every day, there was something. And I'd say, I'd go find it, Andy, come here, look at this. And it would be the play of the shadows of the sun coming through against something on the wall or some other feature. You know, in the morning, coming into the bedroom and all the arbutus branches are reflected onto the walls and as it moves around, it's a, you know, it's a, it's a canvas that's continuously changing. I am looking forward to sitting in the house when it's finished and thinking about, huh, my daughter sanded that whole bookshelf and made it really beautiful. All those hands that touch the walls and, yeah, all that work just, you know, it, it's not work anymore. It's something that, that goes beyond that. And all the materials have had a lot of love put into them and it's nice to think about too. We were learning how to do everything ourselves. And so when we're reading about the skills behind working with clay and sand and straw, it's all fairly learnable. Like, you don't have to be 
super highly qualified, trained, skilled person. <laughs> you just have to sort of be willing to learn and watch and observe and then try it out. Having built our own house, if something goes wrong, we know how to fix it. And I think everybody should have some more connection with their house that way and their land too. So that, you know, you're not having to always rely on phoning somebody else to come and solve all your problems. Homes, the way they're being built now, it's like everything in our culture, it's disposable. It's kind of the way that our shelter system is, is developed. It's kind of scary to think about conventional materials off-gassing for years after a conventional house is built. It kind of makes you appreciate how people originally built houses. I've been in easily a hundred different natural buildings, in different climates and different regions. And natural building kind of brings you back to that where you're connecting to all the materials, you're connecting to the purpose of each space. And just the process in itself is very intentional and very intimate. You are deeply involved with every aspect of the building. One of the, the biggest pluses for building this way is that you, you have the ability not to use toxic materials. So we just take one small step at a time. This house is one, well, it was a big step, but it's one piece of that and we'll just keep trying to walk that path as best we can and not make too big a mess. <laughs>